Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, welcome to the IPF uh, Industrial Product Finders webinar series. Uh, today we are going to be talking about recovery strategies for SMEs, and uh, we have a very eminent panel with us, which will uh, help you in diverse met methods how to resolve some of the issues that you might be facing. I am Pratap Padode, editor in chief of Industrial Product Finder, founder of ASAP Info Global Group, a leading business information provider across construction, infrastructure, and engineering sectors. Uh, so COVID-19 has disrupted lives, and while 1.7 trillion has been announced for the economically weaker section, a package for SMEs is still awaited. So we've had a, a three-month uh, moratorium on loans already announced we've had interest rate reduction we've had some compliances department deferring the deadlines uh, we've had provident fund some relief also but all this is uh, not enough we have um, we are currently facing and there are industries which are in hot spots some have had their demand completely crushed uh, as an outcome of this but what we hear is in the, in a day or two, that is today or tomorrow, a relief package for the uh, MSME and SME sector is likely to be announced. And it's going to come in tranches over, so it's not just going to be one because there is an estimate, maybe it's going to be 5% of GDP, the entire lot, including the 1.7 trillion or 1.7 lakh crore, which has been announced. Uh, essential thing is 99% of companies in India are under a turnover of rupees 250 crores but these these also contribute 50 percent of india's exports i mean it's very very important the number of people employed here they need to be obviously and government is easily kind of very very much concerned about this let me take you through a few slides So our panelists include Mr. Bhavesh Thakkar from Ernst & Young, uh, Advocate Mohit Kapoor, who's an expert on labor laws, uh, Rachana Busari, she is Vice President from National Stock Exchange, SME, uh, SME Division. We have Mr. Rajiv Chawla, Chairman, I am SME of India. We have Mr. Shaikat Roy, who's from Care Ratings, and Mr. Shubha Bangera, who's Director uh, from the PMMAI Association and Chairman of Active Biz Solutions. Industrial Product Finder has been running for last 48 years and is the uh, go-to source for procurement needs for the engineering industry. Uh, includes verticals like pumps and valves, automation, machine tools, hydraulics, material handling, testing, etc. We provide information on 200 products across 38 verticals every month. It's easily India's most trusted and largest circulated industrial magazine. Um, audience profile includes various industries, pharma, automobiles, process, general engineering industries, PSUs, FMCG, and it has an international viewership as well. Its website, ipfonline.com is accessed uh, regularly. We have also introduced uh, the video product video uh, on our website where, because it's essential that industrial products are shown in motion. And so we have a scheme where people, if you log into ipfonline.com, you can actually put together, a, we can put together a video for you in, in, our, in just 10 minutes. And that video can attract a lot of uh, leads from people who are interested in a product. Here's a sample of the video. So just to give you a sample, that was uh, the, the kind of video which we can create for all of you uh, who, who need such a service. 
we track the data of people who actually visited the video saw the video require the product and we pass on the leads for you so this is uh, uh, and a lot of time people spend more time on product videos than just simple product information and uh, that's why this is being given to you as a service by ipfonline.com we also do social media management etc for digital strategies for sme companies including website creation lead generation and you can note the number there and you can note the email id and contact priyanka at asapinfoglobal.com okay here's an interesting uh, slide which has just come to me from overseas it's about the us and how this covid 19 pandemic is going to pan out when are we going to see normalcy so if you see here uh, we have seen march 20 april 20 everything is peaking the new cases are peaking and this is only about us this is not india please uh, uh, don't mistake this for india at all so it has just gone up you know geometrically in april to a peak and new cases etc are all in april and may gradually in june it's coming down tapering down because the testing capacity is just going by double so testing capacity of 500000 a day becomes 1 million a day by end of may and then the public health departments are fully staffed by july because that's what we are trying to delay the curve there that we are able to provide healthcare facilities for all and therefore we want the uh, the curve to be much flatter when we can provide this and by then uh, the people return to work schools reopen uh, and uh, then we have what do you think interestingly here is the potential vaccine for healthcare workers is come scheduled to be there around october november so while the healthcare workers will get it it won't be freely available elsewhere and therefore you have again another spike in november 20 of a second wave of infections which goes up but it goes only halfway mark and then it tapers down by march 21 by which time the potential vaccine is broadly available so this is the cycle so it's not that things are just once the lockdown ends things are going to go back to normal there is uh, until the vaccine becomes broadly available to all this is not going to fade away so quickly okay here i would like to now enter into the question round for our panelists so how we have to see that the of course the impact is very severe and i would like mr bangera to come in now how severe is the impact of covid 19 pandemic on smes mr bangera yeah uh, can you listen to me yes yes See, as you already mentioned, that SME is a backbone of uh, Indian manufacturing um, and etc. And uh, the impact of this strongest bond is really very serious. There are two reasons for this. Is that you know, the first of all, SME is uh, connected to most of the large scale industries as a supplier. Number one. Number two. SMEs are basically, most of them are the family owned business. Our business started by an entrepreneurs uh, uh, you know, who actually put up all their money to run this business. The impact has been very seriously seen because uh, they have a huge cash flow problem right now. And on one side, the government is saying uh, that you, know, you have to pay salaries, you cannot uh, you know, remove. On the other side, there is no fund, no fund coming. There is no fund, and this is really creating a problem. Yesterday, I was uh, fortunate. Uh, Mr. Vangra, your sound is not proper. May I, may I, meanwhile, ask Mr. Rajiv Chala to come in and uh, also take this question: the impact of this pandemic. Uh, what how how badly is the uh, SME industry hurt? Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, in the Corona times, SMEs or if I say MSMEs are perhaps the worst hit. In fact, there is no one who has remained without any impact. But then, idea is that in the circuit, uh, perhaps the most affected are MSMEs. If I take the first M and that is the micro imagine the plight of a young uh, or uh, you know uh, entrepreneur uh, self-employed professional 
uh, let us say an auto rickshaw driver, a taxi driver, a self-employed person who would have just taken a cab or an auto rickshaw on debt, uh, let us say in the month of January or December, and uh, what would their situation be? They're not allowed to go out. There is no right to livelihood, if I may say at the moment. And uh, while the bank interest cycle, the debt cycle keeps move, moving. Uh, take the second scenario when a lot of, uh, you know, again, small entrepreneurs, let us say, uh, in uh, the spa business, in uh, cinema halls, uh, restaurants, etc., uh, very badly impacted. They were the first ones who were asked to close. So uh, uh, that is the second scenario. In the third, at the third level, the entire uh, country is now in the lockdown, and this lockdown would go for 40 days. Now. Uh, uh, Naturally, everyone is impacted, a daily wage worker, a factory, an entrepreneur, uh, everyone, except, of course, perhaps for the few essential services who could be, you know, maybe uh, for, for their own reasons, uh, you know, gaining markets at the moment. But I'll, I'll not talk about those exceptions uh, who are working and essentially for us. And uh, we are thankful to them that they're doing that. But the entire uh, MSME sector is closed while the only sector that keeps moving which I see is the debt cycle and I really wonder why uh, government once they announce the lockdown uh, once they ask us not to do business the entire uh, one full month of a financial year would go mm -hmm. as zero revenue for 99% of the entrepreneurs in the country so while no one has right right now to start work and generate revenue, uh, the banks or the clock keeps moving. So I really wish a government could halt that clock as well. And that would have given uh, some relief. But then we'll talk about the relief measures later. Yeah. But as of now, I believe that everybody is impacted, but the most impacted are the daily wage uh, earners, the self-employed professionals who would complete a job and then would get money uh, people who are debt, uh, you know, who are availed of debt, bank debts, etc. So they, of course, would be because the debt burden is moving. So 45, 40 days later, 45 days later, once they open their enterprises, the debt burden of six weeks would already be added to them with zero revenue in the last six months. Mr. Shaikat Roy, can you tell us specifically which sectors you think are most badly affected? Well, good morning, everybody. While we look at sectors, we basically need to just identify between uh, those industries which are in the essential commodities and those who are uh, dealing with uh, discretionary products and goods. Uh, we will need to remember that in the MSME space, uh, just about two thirds are in the services sector. So it's only one third in the uh, manufacturing sector. We don't have any model post 1930s to analyze this, but if we just take ourselves back to what happened after DEMON and uh, GST implementation, we saw that the discretionary purchases came with a lag. It was slightly deferred. So we will also have to keep in mind the time uh, period. Uh, this was the peak tourist time. The schools are uh, off. So obviously hospitality, anything to do with logistics services they will be severely hit and it's clearly value foregone the other sectors uh, like garments footwear utensils automotive there is some ray of hope that we could see a little bit of deferred purchase okay okay now i would like to bring in uh, mr bavish Tucker on uh, you know we have last month we have seen a 1.7 lakh crore economic stimulus and then we've also heard the government say that it'll release 18,000 crores in tax refunds to small businesses. What kind of initiatives have been launched by the government during this period, Mr. Bhavish? Yeah, good morning all and thank you, Mr. Pratap. So obviously the 1.7 lakh uh, crore package, which is you see is mostly targeted towards the lower income groups wherein the challenge is to provide them with uh, daily and basic needs of food and other essentials. Uh, coming to more from an industry perspective, I will uh, probably like to bifurcate this uh, into three buckets, the relief measures what have been taken. 
So one is obviously on compliances, where I like to bring on one or two aspects which industries need to be aware of. Second would be the fiscal release what I've been given, and the third measures. So compliance, obviously, many of the time limits were extended, both in income tax and uh, indirect taxes. The timelines under income tax for completion of proceedings, assessments, all have been extended, and also filings or income tax payments which were due by March can now be made up to June 2020. But that is with the interest of 9%. So don't be under the impression there is no interest on that. So normally on late payments, the interest is much higher, but still we'll continue with the 9% part interest, which is there. Also one thing very, very important over here is that the whole social media forwards, which were going on on the financial year getting extended is not true at all. And that has been clarified, but I thought so this is the right forum to put that across also on gst relief on filings it need to be kept in mind that the compliance requirements are different for units below 5 crores of turnover and above 5 crores of turnover this is very very important friends the late fees has been waived in all the cases but interest at 9% would be charged if not paid within the specified due dates let me give a very simple example so if your turnover is above 5 crores and your due date for the month of February was 20th March. So the relaxation for no interest has been given up to 4th April. So your due date was 20th March. If you didn't pay after up to 4th April, there was no interest. But however, post that, interest would be charged at the rate of 9% till 24th June. And beyond that, 18% interest would be levied. So friends, please keep that in mind that for turnover below four cro 5 crores, there will be no interest on late fee. But above 5 crores, there are interest being levied. Now, obviously, with this lockdown getting extended, there are a lot of representations being filed on to increase this due date or extend this due dates further. Only time would tell. On the fiscal relief, I would say the foreign trade policy, which was giving incentives to exporters, was due to expire on 31st March 2020, which has now been extended for one more year. So this helps us to claim any benefits if you have not claimed under the popular MEIS or SEIS claim for exporters. So please file those refunds at the earliest and uh, claim those reliefs. Those dates have been extended. Those are online schemes, so you need not uh, probably wait for the lockdown to open honestly. Uh, on the fiscal side, again, I will say income tax refunds below below five lakhs have been instructed to be refunded, and it is actually been implemented. Let me tell you, if you are talking to our clients, most of the refunds of exporters and refunds below five lakhs in income tax have been actually issued, and they have reached the bank accounts of uh, most of the enterprises. And on other measures, I would say the RBI measures which came about the credit and the repo rate for more liquidity in the market. Uh, fixed charges of electricity in Maharashtra has also been waived for three months. And this would be levied collectively after three months. So though not a permanent relief, but certainly a cash flow issue, I should say. All banks and financial institutions are also permitted to grant moratorium for a period of three months for a term loan installment and the interest and this will not result in any asset downgrade so you will not be considered as an npa or anything and there are other measures like company law provisions also for holding board meetings personally and all that have been relaxed but i've told that much is awaited and rest is expected in the next one or two days but three are the three large buckets where we can look at uh, this kind of subsidies which are give, given yeah, okay. Uh, which have been given rather. Over to you. Thanks, Bhavish. Yeah. Thank you, Bhavish. I want to now bring in Mr. Mohit Kapoor. Uh, so, uh, Mohit, can you, you know, there are lots of challenges being faced by SMEs in paying wages, salaries. Sometimes the model of the business may not be sustainable. So, what option does yeah. an SME have? And government has been advising there cannot be any retrenchment. Is it applicable only to factory workforce or even to white collar jobs? So what can uh, what can SMEs do? All right, morning uh, everyone. I I would just like to brief everyone. First is that 
uh, the government has given advices, but all those advices have been given under the Disaster Management Act. Now, Disaster Management Act is an act which supersedes all the all the laws in the country at this moment. So, uh, and the word there has been used in the advices as well as the various state notifications, employees as well as workers and contract laborers. So, basically, paying wages, salaries, not reducing their salaries. This is all mandatory now. Uh, there is no scope of any ifs and buts in that. And one will have to comply with that because otherwise uh, government may invoke, uh, there are various sections under the Disaster Management Act, Section 51, 58, et cetera, and IPC 188 also. So my advice would be to first uh, comply with what has uh, been guided under the Disaster Management Act because there is no ro room of any appeal anywhere except High Court or the Honorable Supreme Court. Regarding the present scenario, as far as the workforce is concerned, uh, we can uh, we will have to pay the wages and salaries to them. Regarding the retrenchment laws, even the Prime, Honorable Prime Minister in one of the seven points have said not to reduce the strength. So basically, retrenchment and all these factors will fall under labor laws, but now we have to honor what is stated under the Disaster Management Act not to reduce that. Once things are normal, then for those small companies, uh, there are two options available for them. One is those who are having strength of less than 50 employees. For them, layoff is not possible. But those who are having more than 50 and less than 100, they can go for lay layoff their employee force or the workforce of the manufacturing sectors. For, more, for those employees, uh, for those companies which are having more than 100, uh, again, there is no scope for layoff because for that you have to seek permission from the, your respective state governments, which is very difficult to get unless and until you prove that what is the situation of your company. The other point is retrenchment. Yes, retrenchment, etc. can be possible, but that is only possible for those companies which are having less than 100 employees. Uh, as far as Maharashtra state is concerned and Rajasthan or uh, Madhya Pradesh has extended that 100 to 300. In that, we cannot pick and choose any employee. We will have to go as per the category. Suppose you have got 10 helpers, or then you are the junior most helper will have to be retrenched by paying him the necessary dues as per the law, which is one month notice pay, 15 days per year of service as compensation, gratuity, and other legal dues. So that is, as, and if you are having more than 100, even retrenchment is not possible. What I would suggest is that. Uh, we wait for some time at this moment since the disaster management all orders are being issued under the some uh, under the set act after a particular period uh, individually one has to plan how to run the company one one has to plan the excess man force if it is there in the plants uh, one has one can do a national productivity council study whether you require for your manufacturing or for your other sectors or whether uh, x minus 5 or x minus 10 can work it out three is that we can try to uh, future increments future benefits all can be restrained i mean there's no need there, there, there will be no compulsion for anybody to give an increment to an employee after uh, when it is due in the next uh, and as well as no other benefits can be increased you can restrict your the futures but present whatever it is we will have to manage the shows for some time or else uh, we'll have to wait if government gives some sort of a, a benefit like in, in a, some global countries denmark uh, new zealand australia uh, uk Aust uh, the, some sort of wage uh, reliefs packets have been announced by the government so if the association's concern can take up the uh, matter with the government of india then things can improve for them that's all. Thank Thanks, you. Uh, you know, recently I heard that Bangladesh has introduced uh, somewhere where yes. they are taking care of the salaries and wages for three months and converting into a loan, which is then payable yeah. by the company, obviously. So things like that, uh, even our neighboring nations are doing. And therefore, I want to come to because you know you can't be having, uh, you can't be uh, can't not reduce your costs when you have no demand and no sale. So I think uh, the SMEs are expecting some sort of a relief before they can even implement that. But like Mr. Mohit Kapoor said that we need to wait for what clarifications come from the government because I think the government also realizes this. 
So I want to go to Mr. Bangera. What do is what do SMEs really want? Uh, you know, we are seeing all these problems. We are seeing that uh, demand is hit. We are seeing costs have to be maintained in some cases, like salaries and wages, etc. Until clarifications come. So what what do what, what is what are the SMEs wanting now in terms of the package? Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Okay. See, the SMEs today is well, there are short term problems and there are long term benefits. And I look into the short term problems should be taken over by the government by supporting the SME. And on the long term, all the SMEs, because you know they are also uh, attending a lot of other seminars, I have looked into a lot of opportunities coming in their way. I mean, if I look at Today, when you talk about um, uh, China doing almost four trillion dollar of uh, manufacturing activity, India is hardly doing around four hundred billion. So, and a lot of things are going to get they come back to India. So the SMEs are prepared to do their futuristic plan very well, but they are because of this pandemic, they were not actually having a kind of an, um, uh, uh, support which is needed for the next six months. I believe in six month period, they will be smart enough to get out of this. They will be, uh, they will be, uh, yeah, be able to build their organization in a way. But today, everybody needs support in the next short term period. And I think I listened to all other panelists, you know, talking about uh, what is going to happen. Government is coming up with the scheme, which actually is uh, probably in after four days. We'll give a better way to answer. And, uh, but expectation of the SME is a dry down. Support us for next six months with what else schemes you have. We will rebuild our organization. We will restructure our production capacity. We will go into effort for the lean manufacturing. Uh, we will do all that SMEs will do, but at this so stage, six months. Need... So yeah, you're six looking months. at a six-month release, right? Uh, Mr. Chawla, Mr. Chawla, what do you say? All right, uh, I have uh, two takes, and I've been listening to a lot of speakers there, and all of them very learned. And uh, I'll first talk about the relief measures. Uh, see the three buckets, and we we just heard, uh, you know, of relief. Tell me one thing. In India, the, my point is that is deferment a relief? I mean, it's a compliance issue because I cannot, my office is closed, my people cannot come to the office, they cannot check the books of accounts. So the date of filing a particular return has been deferred. Uh, interest has not been deferred, uh, uh, has not been waived. So I think the first bucket. Uh, where it's only, uh, you know, the return, uh, etc. delay is actually not a relief. Uh, even the uh, provident fund relief that the government says that the government would be paying 24%, 12% employer share and 12% employee share for three months uh, is applicable only with two conditions. Condition one, that there should be less than 100 employees in a unit. And condition two is that 90% of those employees should have uh, wages or salaries less than 15,000, which means that one of course is that any enterprise with more than 100 employees is out. Now there are hundreds of small manufacturers manufacturing uh, carpets, uh, doing labor intensive jobs, uh, firecrackers, etc. So any compliant MSME which uh, had all the workforce on rolls. Uh, is now out because they are more than 100. Second thing is that the condition of 15, that uh, less than 10% should have salaries above 15,000. 90% should have less than 15,000. It means that virtually the entire service sector is out. But the smallest IT company or a you know, service enterprise, a, a consultancy enterprise, which would have 10, 50, uh, 100 people, uh, would naturally have salaries of at least 10% people beyond 15,000. So that benefit also is not accrued. Interest cycle keeps rotating. So my first point is that the, I don't actually take these as relief measures. These are only deferments and my liability has been postponed. Second is this further adds a debt trap to me because 
this deferment means that all the installments and the interest accrued thereupon is now being added to my principal and based upon that my further installments would be made so it's a virtual debt trap it's compounded interest now that will be levied on the msmes third the addition the offer of additional loans for example state bank of india they said that they'll give 10 percent additional working capital uh, on the existing sanctioned capital to the entrepreneurs so that they can restart their businesses now this giving a 10 percent extra additional working capital loan to existing regular accounts people who already mortgaged their homes there people who stocks and receivables are already mortgaged is it a relief i think it's business for the bank that they're giving 10 percent additional working capital to their existing good customers who've already mortgaged their lives even their families futures with the bank so i hardly call these relief measures then the refund income tax return in india getting a an income tax refund or a gst refund is actually such a tedious process that if the government says okay i'll refund you in time we call it a relief so I typically look at all these three buckets as only, uh, you know, uh, you know, deferments, uh, a time thing because it cannot be done, uh, you know, online meetings, EGMs uh, or board meetings because uh, there is lockdown. So I, these are hardly relief measures. And then with added burden of wages and salaries that has been put on every entrepreneur across. And there are sectors like tourism, uh, restaurants, cinema hall. You think people would start going to restaurants and cinema halls immediately after the lockdown? Or if you open a mall, people would people throng those malls? Or would start visiting Taj Mahal and uh, Gateway of India so soon? Uh, in fact, airlines, tourism, restaurants, uh, pubs, uh, breweries, discotheques, so all these businesses would take much longer time if at all when they revive and that too in what form so i think that relief package for msmes actually has not yet come and if, I, if you ask me there are two major things that msmes are looking at one that when the entire business clock 90 percent 99 percent of the business clock of india has been stopped halted by law by orders why interest cycle also cannot be halted this is one very important thing uh, for the lockdown days if the bank interest cycle also halts i think it will be a very fair thing the way i am an entrepreneur i am not making any revenue but there is a liability of my employees uh, uh, salary similarly a bank for 45 days should not be charging interest and i'm sure right. banks would maybe maybe government can say that okay no interest would be payable so even an fd owner uh, yeah. you know that 1945 thing second important thing is that for the epfo a scheme like epfo should also be applicable on esi that is also a deduction a burden that uh, that an entrepreneur pays for an employee then yeah. esi has funds of 91000 crore similarly epfo Similarly, every state welfare board has a labor welfare fund. Now, all these are what we call social security. What use is social security if it is not used at this time? So this right. is the time. These are unprecedented times. And therefore, these require measures uh, that uh, our policymakers should be looking at. A favor of interest, at least for the lockdown period. If not three months or six months, those could be wishful thinking. But I think it will be very fair to use of social security fund to pay for the lockdown days that again would be very very fair and if these two things come up naturally entrepreneurs would now then fend for themselves additional loan something is hardly a relief that is another, another debt burden and i don't want uh you know though bigas i mean film being remade on uh, msme entrepreneurs once upon a time only farmers would lose their land by compounded interest to some zamindars or money lenders i don't want let's, msme sector to get this Chawla, let's future. move to the banking I, I think you made your point i think it's very very fair what you have said is these these were not reliefs they were just conveniences which uh, have been brought in because the entire 
the sector has been inconvenienced uh, due to this uh, pandemic so let's say what is the survival you know so funding and credit flow has been severely hampered what are the options to sme so we i would like to bring in rachna here uh, who is from the national stock exchange uh, uh, sme sector rachna what are the what what options are you uh, suggesting for smes i think you already have an sme exchange which uh, addresses already a lot of companies on board rachna please need to unmute yourself thanks to ipf for holding such an enlightening uh, webinar uh, i would say it's a very apt and needed the r uh, yeah coming back to the point what are the various options available to smes uh, i think uh, it's un uh, non debated that yes funding is going to be the biggest challenge for smes uh, post the lockdown period and uh, uh mr rajiv chavla has made his point very clear that debt is going to be a uh, debt is a trap which the smes would be only burdened with further and further in case there is not much relief provided yeah at this stage i would want all the participants and the sme participants to also understand that uh, you know debt is not the only funding mechanism that's available to smes there is an equity funding mechanism that is available and uh, more than 500 companies have already availed this equity funding uh, mechanism is through the public markets we at nse has have set up a special exchange or a separate exchange wherein these smes come and list themselves on the stock exchange and uh, raise funds through the ipo the initial public offer mechanism and uh, we've seen uh, uh, more than around 3000 crores of funds being raised through this platform though i would say that yeah the challenges are going to be unprecedented but i think it's an opportunity as well for cities to look at that you know do you want to get into more of leverage or do you want to actually capitalize on the equity that you have with you uh, the requirements have been fairly simple uh, for this platform and uh, it's just about your track record and your profitability and the profitability is again not at the net profit levels it's at the cash profit levels so very simple requirements the disclosure requirements are very uh, 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 i think have been relaxed comfortably uh, as compared to the main board and i also want to make a point here is that for the companies which have been listed on the stock exchange i think there's a wonderful mechanism of a follow on public offer additional raising of funds so these companies are already in the groove of uh, the regulatory uh, measures they are already uh, being regulatory monitored they are used to being uh, uh, having the compliances in place and they are already a listed entity so what they can do is actually look out for preferential allotment or rights issues or a follow on public offer which would help them boost their capital requirements through this mechanism so i am saying is that you know i think uh, um, for companies which are already leveraged uh, with respect to debt i think this is a opportunity which they must think it's not only about you know rethinking the business synergies rethinking the business strategies or thinking about you know uh, what is going to be the next way because i think the 40 days lockdown the clear message is that it's not going to be normal what was normal yesterday things are going to change drastically post the lockdown lockdown so i think it's high time people think about what is the funding mix that they want to have for their sme company rachna rachna i would like you to also address the you know currently nobody might be able to go for an ipo or anything like that given the environment but you have a facility of the bill discounting which right. can be done yeah 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 so yeah my first point was about getting themselves prepared and thinking about this platform though you know this platform may be not in the near uh, reach of uh, uh the companies in the immediate future but yes uh, nsc along with sidbi has a uh, platform which is the rxil platform which is a factoring platform so in these companies the smes can discount their uh, bills and uh, get an advantage and have a better working cycle uh, management happening through this platform it's again a way transparent online platform i can share the ppt with pratap post this uh, um seminar so that every msme can look at what is this platform for and how they can actually get into factoring of their invoices to tide over the working capital crisis that i think most of the companies would face post the lockdown yeah thanks rashna so just for the uh, information of uh, our viewers uh, 
basically this allows you to you know put up the bills that you have where you have receivables and they are put up on the exchange rxil that she mentioned where you get the best interest rates lowest interest rates because other banks and nbfcs are competing to give you that money up front and while they will collect the money later on from the uh, the party which was supposed to pay the bill uh, so but we'll send you the details as she said i want to ask bhavesh the same question what are the options for smes in finance yeah so pratap uh, first of all to start i absolutely echo mr chawla's views ke this is not the relief package what we are looking at and something is expected tomorrow so if you look at the international uh, comparisons uh, frankly you are looking at uh, 0.88% of gdp coming as a relief in india whereas us it has already touched 10% of the gdp which has gone as a relief measure so something is expected tomorrow or day after probably but just where we are today obviously to apply for all those benefits which are there to immediately apply the ftp benefits what we discuss yes there are relief measures by banks and uh, what we need to see the refunds are very fast uh, being uh, disbursed now so see in your balance sheets if something is available and whether you can immediately claim those uh, benefits and important part is all the companies have been direct uh, the larger companies have been given a directive to clearly disburse the funds of msme sector first whether it is tata motors or mahindra so company act has given them a directive to clear the funds of msme sector first so uh, immediately get registered yourself under the udyog aadhar if you have not done so out of the indian msmes only 20% are registered under udyog aadhar so request to the balance 80% register yourself under the udyog aadhar which is a msme certificate it's a online thing and immediately send it to all your large scale vendors that yes i am a msme company and you are bound to pay me within the due dates otherwise you will be paying heavy interest which is not allowable as a income tax deduction so i would say ftp benefit which has been extended refunds of income tax please have a look at your balance sheets and immediately apply for the udyog aadhar but yes let's wait for the larger relief measures to come mr pratap okay uh, now i want to ask uh, mohit kapoor uh, what can uh, the smes do to protect themselves so that they are ready when the lockdown ends and when the sort of normalcy starts to limp back uh, what are the steps they can take what can you suggest so uh, basically i just repeat that as far as the workmen uh, all the employees who are coming under the workmen category will have to continue to bear the expenses of them as far as white collars we can try to start releasing advances against their salaries of 70 to 80% and once the lockdown gets uh, over you can try to speak to them and try to make them understand individually that will help to resolve some issues or you can also ask them to adjust their leaves Uh, only once the lockdown gets over not before that however before starting your plants or factories or your workplaces i would request everybody to go through the annex 1 and 2 as per the new orders passed by ministry of home affairs of 15th april 2020 lot of directions and instructions have been given for workplaces as well as establishment before you plan before you plan to start yourself please go through that and see whether you are able to comply with all these uh, directions and suggestions and sops informed therein otherwise uh, it is stated that penal actions may come through so one has to be very careful in that uh, one also has to plan itself about the orders one has to plan itself about uh, booking its orders one has to plan the strength of the employees whether you really require these people all this planning will have to be done before you start restart your operations that is my only suggestion to all thank you right so you know i think uh, there are also you know there was another uh, word of caution here that construction and building sites have been also allowed to operate and certain industries i think if we we may get uh, enthusiastic trying to start there are two things yeah. one the demand is going to be Uh, much much lesser than what we had when we ended the before we ended uh, this before we started the lockdown and secondly we can't have a, any situation of any incidence of infection happening in our factories our industries our building sites because if that were to happen 
there will be immediately apart from the penalty with mr kapoor mentioned there will be a image immediate shutdown of your factory or your industrial enterprise and wherever else it is also might also be subject to such scrutiny so i think one has to be very 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 careful and cautious in actually getting from this 20th april onwards as the lockdown gets lifted one has to provide all the things that are necessary in terms of the instruction so that you are absolutely clear i'd like mr chavla to uh, suggest what steps the smes can take uh, to be ready for a bomb hello yeah a uh, couple of steps uh, i'll say one is individual preparation the first preparation is from self make sure that whether lockdown opens on 4th of may i mean as it is expected or whether some zones uh, on 20th would start would get permission to work uh, we have to be as someone just said uh, very very community conscious so i would say the first preparation is start calling your people your team i hope you've been in touch with them for the last 30 days and if not uh, please uh, get up this is the time that you should be talking to all your teammates all your employees all your workmen contractors casual workers temporary workers contractual workers everyone the reason is and i'll just give you a small example just a couple of days back there was a small rumor in mumbai that trains may restart and you could see thousands of people thronging railway station there now just remember this shows that thousands of workmen today are preparing to go back to their hometowns and villages uh, bihar and jharkhand or wherever they come from and uh, so which means that one of the first things could be that whenever the trains open or the public transport opens up you would see a lot of exodus then exodus happened even on roads so point is i am forcing a huge labor shortage uh, especially for factories and uh, for the blue collar jobs in times to come so i would say get in touch with your people talk to them give them confidence uh, give them support right now we are debating upon whether to pay wages or not point is would we get people even after payment of wages later on so therefore it was this is the time for the best hr practices to uh, come into the smallest of the enterprise so even though you may not have a separate hr director uh, it is time that every entrepreneur or uh, the proprietor director himself you know dons the role and gets in touch with people give them confidence give them some support so that at least you have team when you open up second very important thing is make sure of all the government conditions that have been laid down proper hygiene sanitation uh, uh, disinfection uh, so make all arrangements honorable prime minister has already mentioned that homemade masks are good enough so talk to your people uh, tell them that they should be carrying homemade masks or you buy masks for them i am against use of single one time use masks the reason is the way we could see a lot of plastic litter around i don't want india to see lots of one time use mass litter littered around the entire country uh, every dumping yard every dustbin so this is the time that each one of us become conscious the way we carry our homemade bearmade bags for shopping it is also the time for homemade mass give that uh, education to your people make sure that social distancing norms are met within the enterprise uh, make sure that there is proper water and soap arrangement so point is an enterprise should be worthy of working let me tell you post corona times uh, the business ecosystem would change forever and many many things have changed forever so therefore i believe that every enterprise has to upgrade and therefore comes the second thing that you would need whatever cash you have right now and believe me that could be all that you will have for a long long time in march you did business only for half a month many of you didn't do any business at all in march because your lockdown had happened much earlier but most of us did business for half of the march april is zero now if i look at a say 45 day payment cycle march payment is due in may 
that is considering that there is no disruption in the payment cycle april no sales no revenue so expect nil payments in the month of june so make a cash flow statement what are the essential expenses you are supposed to make in uh, may first week now or may now you would have to pay the wages and salaries for the month of april to your people that is the first expense many states have heartily given a relief on fixed electricity charges for example in haryana uh, where i am located uh, they they've given fixed uh, uh, relief on fixed energy charges up to maximum of 10000 rupees a month so imagine yeah so i i'll quickly my point is cash flow management is second thing third is uh, follow the inventory mechanisms get in touch with your customers uh, sup your supply chain whom you are supplying to is there as much demand what is the material lying in the transit uh, uh, you know your e-way bills do those have been extended what condition your goods there are whether semi good goods semi finished in your enterprise or finished goods lying in the markets and supply chain right. and lastly some of us who are making finished products, like someone is, could be making furniture, for example. Now, is your retail uh, shop open where uh, you know, it sells? So the malls, whether they are open, how you would be selling, how, what would be the future mechanism, whether online sales or physical sales. So these are some very, very important things. It is time for introspection, time for cash flow management, and time to get in touch with people we need to, to now we need to now get into a poll so uh, all the attendees just before we go before to the next question i want to see the sense of the house so the next uh, question is where you have a panel on your uh, screens and you can see a poll question the question is which is your topmost challenge so there are options is salaries and wages your topmost challenge demand or infection likely to come or happen or government dues which have not been received or you need loans what is your topmost challenge please uh, choose the 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 only challenge which is the topmost one and we will know the results in a few seconds uh, i have a couple of other questions as well so once you finish this we will move on to the <clears throat> let me give you 15 20 seconds to finish this Okay, I think uh, these the biggest challenge. Okay, we are moving to the next poll. I have the answers, uh, but I will reveal to you after this poll is over. Okay, salaries and wages actually seems to be the biggest challenge to people, followed by the demand, which has been so 50% of the people feel, and there are more than 400 people right now. 50% uh, of the people feel that salary and wages is the biggest challenge, followed by the that the fact that demand has been badly affected. The next poll question, which is your most preferred solution? Do you need a moratorium on loan for six months? Do you need a loan for paying salaries and wages for three months? So a loan for that amount, which is your salary and wage amount for three months? Or do you need a release of government dues, which have been pending for a long time? Or do you need extension of existing loan limits? Or you think the reduction of GST, which is the most preferred? Select only one. So the poll is again available to you on your panel. Please uh, choose which is the most uh, difficult issue which you want resolved ASAP. And I think uh, the government is likely to introduce some business package today or tomorrow. Hopefully the earlier the better. Okay, I think uh, we are done with this as well. Uh, and there is one more question, but I can tell you the answers to the, just now what we finished. So uh, most people, the three, three areas are equally divided on, people are equally concerned about, one is moratorium on loans for six months, loan for paying salaries and wages for three months and reduction of GST. All three, 25% uh, each are the kind of people's uh, views on that. Uh, oh, I wish, oh, I wish they were an option of, government paying these wages and salary uh, at least part sharing or paying through the social security deposits that it has yes okay so now last question will business be back to normal by july uh, easy poll uh, do you think uh, so may third may our lockdown is ending we are still giving one or two months more and 
will this uh, oh boy so this is an overwhelming no i think we are already getting an answer that this is not 75% people are already feeling that this is not going to happen so okay so i would like to come back to this biggest challenge before smes and how they can overcome shekhar troy can you address this biggest challenge before smes how they could overcome it i don't think there is any debate that cash and liquidity in the system would be the biggest challenge let's just take a step backward and uh, consider how did we enter this event risk it was not like the msmes were in their pink of health uh, over the last year i think the numbers are out we were saying that credit growth is about 6% uh, non food credit growth compared to about 14 and a half 15% previous year so there have the msmes have undergone considerable amount of rigor and they have tightened their belt the capacities were at best at 50 60% which i think is a blessing in disguise because if we were at peak running capacities then the falling of the cliff would have been that much hard landing because they were al already considerably uh, uh, subdued capacity utilization probably they will be in a better position to uh, carry on their job now what what do they do with liquidity completely agree with what mr chawla has been extolling all this while even for charity that has to be funded through profit so how are they supposed because they will be faced with two issues one is demand destruction and there are some industries who will play supply side uh, cycle uh, losses because the supply from china will not come basically into the pharmaceutical segment into the specialty chemical sector there will be huge loss so the two questions which will be there in front of us how do you put your supply side uh, on track and how do you get demand for demand what they could probably do is we already have a set policy which is the public procurement policy whereby central government psus ministries and only a few state governments have uh, signed on that 25% of their purchases goods and services has to come from the msme sector hardly anybody reaches that amount so if that part is enforced even in more totality their demand that would be uh, uh, shared with the msmes could see a possible rise on the supplies on the other side we are seeing there are a lot of large corporate and it's a talk which is happening globally localization of your supply chain so we have seen msmes have been far more fleet footed and nimble rather than the large corporates and they have a very very scalable models which also reflects what you saw on the poll where they feel that wages and salaries is the 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 biggest problem because of their scalability so it's cash in and cash out on on a, on a, on a regular basis the way ahead for this in my mind would be actually they will need to pair their balance sheet whatever debt is there the more reduce the better because if what mr kapoor is saying comes true and they have no fallback mechanism other than to pay wages probably we will see a lot of the msmes taking refuge in the bankruptcy laws right so okay so i think um, uh, it a lot depends all eyes on the relief package that is going to come but i want to ask all the panelists one last question one top wish that you wish is part of the relief package so i'll start with mr mohit kapoor what do you what do you want if there was just one wish that you wanted from the government to come what would that be out of all these problems that we have discussed considering that salaries and wages is the major concern for all smes some sort of a relief to the smes from the government as far as wages whichever they are supposed to which they are being asked to be paid to the employees okay mr subodh bangera some sort of percent. my wishing from what rajiv said i wish the government become a godfather and unleash all the social security fund which they are holding to support the industry for six months to take care of their uh, you know fixed cost so that they have time to think how to build their business in next five years that's my wish but obviously you don't want that amount to have any interest on it right <laughs> Okay. Father is Godfather, so there is no question of. Okay, Rachna, what is your wish? Your top wish? 
<clears throat> yeah, my wish would be that government incentivizes companies to come and tap the equity markets and tap the public funds. They can set up a uh, fund which will invest in these companies on their own. So government has their own treasury which invests in these SME companies at all. And they also participate in some uh, reimbursement of the issue expenses of these companies so that if companies are ready to come and list themselves, they're not burdened with the entire cost of issue expenses. And they also have a government uh, treasury participating in their equity story, which gives more credibility to these companies. So that would be my top wish. Mavish, what is your top wish? Yeah, so my top wish would be to look at the best international practices. To so just give you an example, what Italy has done. So government is paying the interest and 50% uh, interest for the next three months. So it is government is not on the sidelines government has actually got into giving that subsidy and what condition they have put is the employees cannot be retrenched for 12 months. So we will pay the interest cost, but none of your employees can be retrenched for a period of 12 months. So some kind of these innovative things learning from best international practices is what we what I feel is solely missing at this point. Uh, Mr. Chawla. Uh, all my wishes have only then, so top, top. Uh, so you uh, see top of course is the interest waiver or the halt of the interest cycle uh, wages also believe me for once i can live with it if it's for one but point is interest cycle that keeps adding because every time one looks at relief uh, you know relief or additional fund to restart or to grow to escalate uh, funding cost the cost of running an enterprise uh, is long term and that makes you know the decisions important whether someone would invest in capacity building invest in some capital uh, right now or invest in you know working capital or term or you know whatever so that is extremely important and just one 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 very small thing you know there are banks at this time demanding prepayment and flow core closure charges entrepreneurs want to you know uh, close their fts or sell off their car or something and repay a loan because of uncertainty ahead and even at such a time there are banks ruthlessly demanding prepayment charges foreclosure charges so rbi has to wake up and do a lot of work a department of financial services have to wake up this is the time for economic reforms for msme sector and that is what i'm looking at good point chaikat your last top wish other than what has already been covered one of the basic the core areas will be to maintain liquidity in the system the large corporates the very highly rated already have access to liquidity to the long-term targeted repo operations now once they have got that money there should be no reason why the payables to the msmes should be elongated and uh, stuck because that will be a key reason where the liquidity in the system will be maintained post the financial crisis we saw that when the large corporates arm to the smes and recovery uh, is elongated and the debtors are paid late that probably will accentuate that downward cycle so wow. so that brings us to the end of the webinar thank you very much uh, panelists i think uh, you all have uh, covered a lot of segments uh, which our smes want to do and i saw a lot of questions from them which were which were partly answered in the poll partly in course of our discussions and so that has been very fulfilling thank you everyone for participating stay safe stay healthy and all the best and we hope that our good package comes to relieve us all of this burden thank you very much thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you